Yeah, sure. Joining us right now is the director of the Champ, uh, Franco Zeffirelli, whose films I think are just, well, in addition to having great drama in them, are noted for their tremendous visual splendor. Films like Romeo and Juliet, The Great Jesus of Nazareth, which is going to be re released in April, and it's a 12 hour movie on television, Taming of the Shrew. Uh, in addition, Franco Zeffirelli has directed and designed plays and opera. Let's have a nice welcome for him. Hey. Welcome. Yeah. Well, I, I have to say, I think the casting was, was perfect in The well, Champ. How long did it take you to find... Uh, well, I knew that um, if uh, God wanted us to make this remake, he would have offered us the material to make it. So, uh, you know, I'm very superstitious about this. I know that casting is 95% uh, of the success of anything we do in, in uh, the performing arts. If you don't land on the right casting, you whip a dead horse. But we didn't uh, fall in the trap this time. And I knew that somewhere... <laughs> Look at this face. <laughs> somewhere, interrupting <laughs> somewhere in America, somewhere, there must have been a child for that to play that role. And one day, my assistant spotted him. We had seen uh, about uh, 2,000 kids, some of them very nice, very interesting. We made a selection of them. And then one day, this, this one was really heaven sent to us. Uh, he reacted lovely, in a lovely way, the first uh, meeting with me, he really opened up. He's very, as you have seen, not an introverted child. Yes, I noticed that <clears throat> immediately. And so that's, that's the first thing, you know, when you deal with a child, he has to open up. He has to be able to express and to feel the things that uh, are needed for the part. And he certainly can feel and express a lot. We're, we're going to see a, a clip, and as I was watching the, this this past Saturday in a screening, at, again at 10 o'clock, go to a movie sometime at 10 o'clock in the morning and come out after crying six or seven times. It's a great way to start the weekend, and I mean that on a positive note. It was like therapy, but with the release from the film, it felt marvelous. This clip is a clip where uh, the champ tells his son that he doesn't want to see him again. The, the prison scene. The, the prison scene. scene, yeah. And as I was watching this, I was wondering what did you say, what kind of things did you say to the actor, Ricky Schroeder, in order to produce the unbelievable response that, that, that came out of that scene? Uh, both uh, John and myself, because I think the operation on the mind and the heart of Ricky was done by both of us jointly. We never treated uh, this uh, phenomenal little person as a child, but as a person, as uh, somebody who has already his personality and he has already his feelings, and we never asked him to do anything that he could not feel. So, we, you know, it's you, you old Stanislavski method, that you have to be yourself and be the character at the same time. But uh, in being the character, you must not alter your own world of feelings. So he always, always recognized himself in what he was supposed to express. So if he had to be cheerful, he felt cheerful. Yeah. And. Uh, sad, he had to be sad, and crying, he had to dig in his own <laughs> tragic or dramatic memories, and he found the reason for crying. It was never a parrot job with him. In that time, I said, John was fantastic, though, because uh, it made him feel, he felt all the time when he was on the set that he was his father. And Ricky, I said to you that we're going to show this, the jail scene, and, and you said, are they going to show the part where he, the champ slaps me? And I said, I think so. And then I said, well, why do, you, why do you want that to be shown? And I didn't hear your answer. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> you cry right. again? I don't know. I, I hope not. <laughs> oh, you cry already. Look, <laughs> I'm thinking of it. <laughs> All right, let's, t let's take a look at this uh, magnificent piece. Uh, from How you doing? I thought you might be hungry. I brought you something to eat. Brought you some ribs. I ain't hungry. Okay, champ. I don't want you to call me champ no more. Why? A champ don't use his fist nowhere but in the ring. But he was trying to take a horse, champ. No, but it don't make no difference, TJ. I had no right, see? I'm a bum. No, you're not. Did, did, 
Did they say when you could get out? Did they say when you could come home? They don't know yet, TJ. Could be a month. Could be six months. Look, there's something we gotta talk about. You know that lady? The one at the boat, the one you're going on about, how nice she is all the time. Annie? Yeah, that's the one, Annie. Well, I want you to do me a favor. I live with her. Why, why can't I stay in the back stretch with Josie? Because I said so. That's why I'm your father and that's the end of that. <laughs> Why do you want me to do that? Because, because you're a pain in the ass, that's why. Because I can't do nothing without, without you nagging at me all the time. Champ this and champ that. I go to have a drink, you say, no, champ, don't. I go to play cards, you say, no, don't do that. You tug at my belt. I'm sick of you tugging at me. I'm sick of feeding you. I'm sick of taking care of you. I'm sick of you hanging around. <clears throat> you're a pain in the ass. Oh, Franco, one of the other things I was curious about is uh, actually, in a way, one would think why Franco Zeffirelli, a great Italian director, to approach the remake of such an American classic, The Champ. Uh, I've already indicated I thought you did a brilliant job. I'm just curious in terms of the, the you know, the ins and outs of the business. Well, um, I had uh, quite an experience uh, of uh, contemporary material in the theater. Unfortunately, oh, in know. America, you haven't seen my, you know, contemporary productions in Europe. So I was only waiting for an opportunity to have a real good, good story uh, and, and come to America. I received a lot of offers before, but uh, you know, I was a bit afraid to come here without knowing enough the background, the people, the methods of working. I didn't want to make a mistake. So I was digging back in the memory. We owe a lot to American culture. You know, Europeans, we, we, we have had received through the several generations tremendous contribution from the American creative people. And one of the things that really, in cinema, it really hit me dramatically when I saw it the first time was uh, the original chap. It was, n was not a, simply a picture, it was a, a personal experience, a trip of my own heart at that age. I was about the age of the mm, Jackie Cooper at that time. So I thought back of it after about half a century, uh, 45 years later, and I, I was sure, for some reason, that uh, there has been another remake of The Champ, or two. Instead, there hasn't been ev ever any. So, I, uh, I mean, to make a sh long story short, uh, I finally convinced the MGM people, Dick Shepard, first of all, to try this remake, which proved to be an, a very difficult operation because uh, there was such a reverence, rightly so, for that marvelous masterpiece that was King Vida's picture. Anyway. It was a personal yeah. need to talk about... You saw the, the possibility for this as a great The remake. possibility, and uh, I deny strongly that the uh, audience of today, the people of today, are not ready for this kind of experience in the movies. And you, you very kindly have indicated that you felt kind of... Tremendous release, release. because it deals with such principal emotions. Father, son, husband, wife, re man re-establishing himself in the very, ba very basic thing where he has been so successful before. And cinema is a marvelous instrument, you know, you can tell all kinds of stories. Uh, I mean, if you imagine that he did uh, The Veteran in Coming Home, which is a superb picture, and then he's done this character in The Champ. I mean, you can do so much. I mean, there is room for everything, provided you are honest, provided you try to help uh, your brothers, you know, the people. Because I can see that everyone in the audience is a brother. I work for that particular brother, which hopefully sometimes is millions of them. But we have to do this kind of uh, operation, try to think how much we can help our friends there to release something uh, heavy on their hearts and, uh, and open up their minds. So this, did it. this was the purpose of it. You did it for sure. We must take a quick break.